so hello everyone so welcome back for the second module of third week so in the last week we had so in the last week and the last module we were discussing about language modeling that is how we can effectively use the word ordering information for various applications so today we will go to the to the next topic we will talk about the morphology information that what are the different models that help us capture this information and and what are the different linguistic terms that are involved so today we will start with the linguistic terms and then we will end with what are the possible models that can help us capture this in a in an automated manner so what is so we are talking about computational morphology today so what is morphology in morphology we study what is the internal structure of words so that is given a particular word in a language what are the different meaningful units it is made up of and each small unit is called a morpheme so let us take some examples so if i take the word docs so it is made up of two different units one is doc the actual root word another is the affix that is applied to the word to make it a plural that is s yes. okay so there are two morphemes in this single word docs similarly if i take a word like unlady like so you are having three different units here so there are three different morphemes so un that is corresponds to not in negation or opposition then lady well behaved woman and like that is having the characteristic of so there are three different morphemes that together constitute this single word so now we will also see what are the various linguistic notions that that you might be might want to be aware of when we are talking about morphology so for example what are allomorphs so given a word like happy if you have to convert it into its opposite so you are making uh, a word like unhappy but if i take another word like rational i'll i'll use ir so i'll make irrational so if there are different morphemes that can be used for the same purpose they are called allomorphs okay so here is an example so so allomorphs we are saying variants of the same morpheme but in general they cannot be replaced by one another so so let us see here so if i have the word happy i can use un to make it unhappy comprehensible i can use in incomprehensible if i possible i can use im impossible and rational i will say irrational okay but you can see that we cannot replace ir by un here so i cannot say unrational that is not a valid english word so there are various uh, reasonings for why a particular morpheme is used one of these could be because of the uh, phonemes that are there in the in the particular word so with rational you have the irrational with happy you have unhappy so that is for different words you have different sort of morphemes that you apply to make opposites so that is for one particular function but for different functions like tenses and and uh, person and all that you again have various uh, categories of morphemes that are applied so again when we talk about morphemes there is a distinction called bound morphemes versus free morphemes so what are those so bound morphemes are those morphemes that cannot appear as a word by itself okay so for example take the previous example unhappy so i cannot take the morpheme un here and use it as a, as a unique single word itself so this is bound by another word that is applied with this say unhappy so it is it is bound with happy or some other word with which it can be used on the other hand if i take the word happy it is a free morph free morpheme it can be used on its own okay so that's how we divide the morphemes into these two categories bound versus free so here are some examples so bound morphemes are like s so it can be used for making plural so with dog you have dogs ly so quick to quickly and ed walk to walked so they are all bound morphemes and then there are free morphemes when they can appear as a word by themselves okay and they can also combine with other morphemes if needed for example if i take the morpheme like house it can appear as a word by itself but can also be combined with other morpheme like s to make plural house age similarly walk it can combine with ed to make it make a past tense of walked and so on some words like of in etc they are also free morphemes they can appear on their own so then there is another distinction and this is very very important when we talk about morphology so in general when i talk about a word 
it can have two main parts one is the stem the main the root word another is the affix and it can have more than one affixage as well so what are stem and affixage okay so when i talk about a word so a stem is the core meaning bearing part okay so i take i take a word like boyage so the 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 stem here will be boy that is the meaning bearing part and then there are various uh, bits and pieces that can be applied to it that that can alter certain grammatical functions so i can have i can apply an s at the end of it to make a plural of this so these are called affixes so in general you can make a correspondence between uh, stems and affixes and bound and free morphemes so you can say that the stems are kind of free morphemes and the affixes are kind of bound morphemes so this kind of correspondence you can you can make so now what are the different types of affixes that you can apply with a given stem so we we just discussed one simple example of applying s so it's applied after the word boy i make a plural with boy so this is called suffix that is applied at the end of the word but in general what are the different types of affixes that can be applied so so we start with prefixes so prefixes are applied before the word so some example in english are un so we make unhappy anti anti national pre pre existing and so on we have these prefixes in other languages also so for example in hindi and sanskrit you have the prefixes like a ati and pra that you can apply with various words or verbs so these are the prefixes then we have suffixes that are applied after the word so like with the word talk i can make a new word talking by applying a suffix ing similarly with the word quick i can make a new word quickly by applying the suffix l ly at the end okay and in in the case of hindi for example you can have the suffixes like ta and k and ka etc that you can apply after the words then so the prefix and suffix are the major major su major suffixes affixes that we have in language but certain language have some other kind of affixes also so one is called infix that is it is applied in between the stem not before or after that so so example is like in sanskrit you have the word with to know and you make the present tense by putting vindati so the 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 character n the the phoneme n is applied in between between v and the so you become it becomes vindati so there are examples in other languages also like in the case of philippines here basa b a s a is read and to make it the to convert it to the past tense read the infix u m is applied in between so you have b u m a s a so u m is applied in between it is called infix now so can you think of any infix in the case of english english it is not common in in common language it is not uh, infix is not used but in general can you make a word in english that that uses infix so so here an example is if i take the word absolutely and put a word bloody inside so you can have a word like absolute blood, bloody lutely so th to put some emphasis that's not used in the common english but yeah in certain movie dialogues and all you can find such kind of words finally so what can what do you think can be the fourth category you have prefix suffix infix now what is remaining is that a suffix and an affix comes before as well as after so this is called circumfix okay so this precedes as well as follows the same word so an example is in dutch so you have a word for mountain b e r g and to to convert it to plural you have an affix that is applied before g e as well as after so the the whole affix is g e t e half of that is applied before and half of that is applied after so this is called circumfix so among these four kind of affixes the first two are very very common prefix and suffix and the last two are specific to certain languages only now morphemes can also be divided into some other categories like contained versus functional morphemes so what are contained morphemes that are those that will that will be a some semantic meaning okay so for example if even if i take any free morpheme like car a word it is always a contained morpheme it contains some semantic meaning similarly i can take 
a morpheme, bound morpheme like able also, that is a semantic meaning. That given a word, it, it, it gives a sense of being able to do something. So, on the other hand, there are certain morphemes that are functional, that do not have the semantic content, they are only used for certain grammatical functions, like as for plural, as for third singular. They are both functional morphemes, you apply it after a word and it has a particular grammatical meaning, but it may not be a semantic, it may not contain a semantic meaning as such. Now, so based on whatever kind of affixes that you, that you apply to a word, you will generate a new word. Okay? So, for example, if I, if I have a word walk and I apply a suffix ing, I get a new word like walking. Okay? So, there is a process that converts a word walk to walking. Okay. So, by putting certain morphology here. Now, take another example. I take a verb like drive and I, I add some affix and make a new word like driver. So, now what is the difference that you see in the two processes? Okay. So, you can call it may be E r drive plus E r that gives you driver. So, from drive you are creating driver versus from walk you are creating walking. So, what is the difference that you see in the two processes? So, if you think about it, in the first case we are not changing the grammatical category of the word as such. Okay, this is a verb walk, it remains a verb here also walking, but you add some grammatical information is a continuous tense. On the other hand, other hand here you start with a verb drive and you end up making a noun. You convert the category of, of the word itself by this process of morphology. So, there are two different kind of morphological processes. So, this is called inflection morphology. And this is called derivational morphology. Okay, so, hey, so, in this slide we are seeing the difference between, between these. So, so they, they, they give you the relation between two words that you, are, you have created. First case you created from walk to walking. So, what is the relation between these two words? Second case you created drive to driver. What is the relation between these two words? So, inflection morphology, it makes changes in terms of number, tense, case and gender. Okay? So, for example, if you start with the word verb bring, you can alter the case. You can have brought, you can have third person singular brings and so on. So, they do not uh, change the category of this word. So, but you add some more grammatical information that is all. So, this is called inflection morphology. You are adding certain inflection information only in the grammatical sense that is not changing the category of the word. On the other hand, you have derivational morphology where you create some new words and you also change the change the category of the word. So, this is called part of speech that we will take up in the same week in, in the in the fourth module. So, it changes the category of the word. So, for example, from logic you can make logical and illogical, logicality, logician and all that. And there you see you can see that they do not have the same category all these words. They have they are different categories one is noun, adverb and, and so on adjective. In general, derivation morphology is also fairly systematic like the inflection morphology, but sometimes certain derivations will be missing. Okay? So, for example, here is here some, some, some nice example. So, if I take the word sincere, I can make sincerity, scarce, scarcity, curious curiosity, but from fears, you do not have a word like fiercity. Okay? Although, it is very, very, if it looks very, very regular if you start seeing from the previous words. So, they are pretty regular, but some words do not have the corresponding derivational word. Now, so we have talked about what are the various kind of morphemes, okay, and what are the processes, what are the different types of affixes that you can apply. But in general, what are the various morphological processes that are involved to convert one word into another word, okay? So, so we'll talk about this. So, for so one simple process is called concatenation. So, you take various morphemes and concatenate together to make a new new morpheme, okay? So, for example. 
happy un you make unhappy simple concatenation similarly here hope and less together make hopeless un and happy make unhappy and and d capital i h t n s these four morphemes if you concatenate together they make a single word or single morpheme so now when you are combining the different morphemes together at the boundary uh, when they are combined there may be certain changes okay the changes can be in in the way the the final word is pronounced or in the way the final word is written so these two are called phonemic changes and graphemic changes grapheme in the in the terms of how the word is written and phonemic in the way word is pronounced so here some example so if i take a word book and a morpheme book and a morpheme s if i combine them together i get books so yes see the pronunciation if i take shoe and s i get shoes so here it's not s it's j it's a dif different phoneme that comes up so there are certain changes that happen at the boundary in terms of how the word is pronounced similarly if i take word like happy and er this change at the graphic graphemic label so where in the grapheme y changed to i so this is also called simply the spelling change at the at the morpheme boundary so this can happen there are some other morphological processes also like reduplication so when you are adding a, a suffix you might do reduplication somewhere in the stem so example is like in normal language if i take a word go for look if i want to say examine with attention i will say i'll just repeat this word go go similarly in tagalog you have basa for read and if i want to say will read i'll i'll duplicate ba 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 sa so you are duplicating one part okay in sanskrit again this is a very common phenomena or duplication i take the word like pach that is to cook and if i if i want to convert it to the perfect form cooked i'll reduplicate the pa and i'll say papacha so you see the the word pa is reduplicated there can be phrasal reduplication also in in certain languages okay example is telugu so certain phrases repeated again so for example i want to say the child fell down while walking so here i say pillavadu nadustu nadustu padi poyadu so here nadustu is being repeated twice for saying while walking okay there are other morphological processes like suppletion where a word is completely replaced by something that has no connection at the uh, surface level so i have a word like go and i am converting it to the past tense and it becomes went so you cannot find any connection between go and went at the surface level this is a sub simple suppletion similarly with good i can make better okay and there are many examples in english for this sometimes there are some internal change in the morphemes so from from sing you want to convert the plural you will so from sing you can get sang and sung for different tenses and from man to convert it to plural you get am and okay and from goes you get gich for again for converting to plural so you see there 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 are changes that are in internally in the, in the word you are not adding any new suffix then while we are talking about word formation there is another process called compounding so that is i can take two different words and make a compound out of that okay and this compounding can be from various part of speech for example in english i can to take two adjectives so bitter and sweet i can make a adject a single compound bitter sweet i can take two nouns rain and bow i can make a noun rainbow i can take a noun and verb pick and pocket and this becomes a verb pick pocket okay similarly overdo and what is interesting is that these compounds are very very particular to languages okay so let's take an example like room temperature that's a that's a compound in english but is there a corresponding compound in hindi so you you never say kamra ta tapman as a, as a single compound you will say kamre ka tapman so that means so finding these compounds is an interesting problem for going to application like machine translation so where you you cannot just directly convert 
the words into their equivalent uh, uh, target languages. So, you cannot say room with camera and temperature with tapman. You need to find out there is a compound, there is a relation between the two words and accordingly do the translation. Then there is another process that is called acronyms. Okay. For example, the word laser is an acronym. Then there is blending. Okay. So, you take, so this is again a very common process in linguistics. So, where you take two words and then you combine together, blend them together to make a new word, but you are taking from both the words, but you are not taking the full words. So, example is breakfast and lunch you take together and make a new word like brunch. Okay. Similarly, smoke and fog you make a new word like smog. Motor and motor and hot hotel make a word like motel. Okay, and there is a process of clipping. Okay, so that students usual usual use a lot. For example, I have doctor. Doctor becomes doc. Laboratory becomes lab, and advertising beca becomes ad. Dormitory becomes dorm, and examination becomes exam. Bicycle becomes bike, and refrigerator becomes fridge. So this is clipping. So long words are shortened. So now, so this is all the different processes that happens in happen in morphology. Now, so from the NLP perspective, so we'll talk about how do we process this morphology. So what do I, what does it entail? What is processing morphology? So what are different things that that are done? Okay. So one simple thing is lemmatization. That is, given a word, can I identify what is the root word or what is the lemma? Okay. An example is if you give me a word like saw. Can I tell what is the root word? Is it a, if it is a verb, the root word word will be C. Uh, but if it is a noun, the root word will be saw itself. So can I find out what is the root verb? So it's lemma. There is a there is a morphological analysis also. So that is given a word, can I find out what is the corresponding lemma along with morphological category of that word? Okay. So it's particular tag. So example is I take a verb word like saw, can I tell the, the lemma is C and this is a past tense of that verb or it, saw is the lemma and it is a noun, singular noun. So, this is morphological analysis of the given word. Then there is a process called tagging. So, where I find out what is the actual, uh, so what is the actual category of this word. So, the difference here is from the morphological analysis that I also have to disambiguate. So, morphological analysis you saw, I was giving two different possibilities. In tagging, I have to further find out what is the actual uh, correct grammatical category here. So, I have a sentence Peter saw her, I know the word saw can be either a noun or a verb and we also saw their lemmas, but can I, can I tell in this particular context, the word saw will only be a verb and not a noun. So, can I do the actual disambiguation also. This is that is how tagging is different from the morphological analysis. And then we have morphological segmentation where given a word I can segment it into with different morphemes that are involved. So, I have a word like denationalization, I say D nation A L I Z N Asian. These are different morphemes that are in this word. So, in general among all these processes, so part of switch tagging is very very popular. So, we will devote some time for that and before that we will quickly see what is uh, morphological anal analysis and lamentation, how it is done. Okay. And finally, there is also this process of generation, there I can take a word, a root word and a particular grammatical category and I have to generate in, in a new word from there. So, C and I want to generate the past tense, I want to find out saw. Okay. In NLP, it is not very popular unless you are talking about natural language generation, where you might want to use this. Okay. So, yeah, before going into the process, what might be the application for doing this? Why should we be interested in doing the morphological analysis? For example, in text to speech synthesis. Okay. So, what is text to speech synthesis? You are seeing something that is written and you have to find produce the corresponding spe speech for that. So, now if you have a word like lead written somewhere, now depending on whether it is a noun or a verb, you will have a different pronunciation for that. Okay. Lead versus lead depending on whether it is noun or a verb. So, it is important to find out from the text whether it is noun or a verb. Okay. 
same thing goes with read okay read versus read in general it is very important for other things like search and information retrieval okay so you might want to use the morphological category to reduce the search space okay and also in machine translation we saw some example and especially because if you know the morphological category you can find out for the target language what is the corresponding affix age or a different word that is being used in that language and grammatical error correction and and all that so if you if you know what is the morphological category of this word in the whatever is written if you can find out this is not the correct morphology that is used you can try to correct it so now what is morphological analysis so so this is what we have seen earlier so as an input we have words like cats cat cities and so on and as an output i want to find out given a word like cats what is the root word like here cat what is category noun and it is a plural cat plus n plus pl something like that so in this table so if i am given an input in the left as per the left column i want a output like the right column okay so so the output that i will generate will contain additional information like this is a noun this is a singular for sg for singular pl for plural and v for verb like that so this is all the information that i want to get from the from the given word now what might be the issues involved while doing morphological analysis one particular problem is that it is not very very regular for example from the word boy i can get plural boys but what happens if i take an input like fly i get flies f l i e s okay so this you see that they are following two different sort of rules for doing changes at the boundary similarly if i take the word like toiling i can get toil but what happens if i give an input like duckling should i use the same sort of rule to get duck that is not a correct english word okay so how do i know that duckl is not a correct english word when an input like duckling is provided to my system similarly from getter i get get plus er from doer i get do plus er but what happens if i give an input like beer do i output like be plus er so these are some of the issues that are involved in processing morphology now if i have to solve this issue what is what are the different knowledge that i need to have so so i need to have some knowledge on what are the different words or roots in english okay so for example i need to know that duck is a possible root but duck is not a possible root in english so we need some sort of dictionary or lexicon of english what are different nouns and verbs etc in english what else i need to have some knowledge of morphotactics what is morphotactics that is which kind of morphemes follow other kind of morphemes for example if i have to convert a noun to plural i know plural morphemes all which follow the now so this is the morphotactics information which morpheme follows other morpheme then i also need to have this information that some endings go only on certain words not on everything so on do i can apply er to get doer but on be on the verb be i cannot apply er to get a word like be so this is again these constraints also i need to have and then i need to some worry about spell spelling change rules so then whenever i have a word like get i apply er it converts to getter so there is a duplication on of this is a duplication of the ending t so now so one question you might have is that okay why can't i put everything together in a big lexicon so that is all the root words all their morphological variants why can't they all be put in a big lexicon and there i can search given new word i can search in the lexicon find out what is the actual word and its category if they are finite why can't i do that so there are two different uh, reasons why this may not be very good solution so one is if you take a language like english it's very easy so where for a given word there are not many variations in terms of morphology so uh, so this is some statistics from a data set that in english there are roughly you take 90000 lexical entries and if you find the all the possible morphological forms that you can generate 
the you find a ratio of 3.5 to 1 that is from a word you can generate roughly 3.5 more uh, vari to variance including that word in English. But this is not true for other languages. For example, the same thing if you do for Sanskrit, you have a lexicon of 170,000 entries, but if you try to derive the forms, so the ratio that you come up with is something like 64.7 is to 1. Okay, so there are 11 million forms that are generated. So they are huge in number. Okay, so 64 is a very big ratio in comparison to 3.5. But again, this may uh, for now you, it may not be a very big number again. Okay, you can still argue that this might still be, be put in a big lexicon and, and you can search over that. But there is another problem. Okay, that is you can keep on coining new words and apply the same morphological processes to generate its forms and you do not know these words are priori. So, you cannot store their morphological variants in the lexicon. So, on the other hand, if you can store the what kind of rules are involved for making from a word to its plural given a new plural form, you can try to find out its original root word. Okay. So, that is why we will be studying what kind of methods are possibly used and the one of the most popular method in this field of computational morphology is final state methods. Okay. So, this was very, very popular earlier for the language like English also and, and later on for other languages like Indian languages and other European languages. So, even now if you talk about processing the morphology, finite state methods are one of the most popular choices. So, fine. So, in this lecture we talked about computational morphology, what are the linguistic terminologies and, and what is the process uh, as such, what is the NLP perspective there. And in the next lecture we will talk about how do I use finite state methods for this processing.